Hi guys and welcome to a new episode of Station Tutorials. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Blake O'Neill and I'm an editor and visual effects artist for the station. Today I'm going to show you how we made Kasim's end slate. So why don't we get started here. Let's go to New Composition and we're going to set it at DVC Pro HD 720 and we're going to set it at 20 seconds. OK. New Solid and we're going to make this our background night sky. So it's going to be sky background and we want it to be a deep blue and make it the composition size and hit OK. Now we're going to go for a new solid and make this one black and this is going to become our particles or our star layer. So let's rename this particles and hit OK and then go over to our effects and type in particles particle world. CC particle world is what we're looking for. Then we're going to come over to the grid, turn the grid off. First we're going to want to turn up our longevity. The next we're going to come down and turn up our X, Y, and Z radius. We're going to want to spread these out a lot because these are going to be spread out in space like they're, you know, like stars would be spread out. So we're going to want a lot of space between these, make sure they're nice and spread out. Then we're going to come down to our physics and we're going to turn our gravity to zero because we don't want these falling and turn our velocity down to zero as well particle motion polygon and let's change the colors here um, a little bit to be more star like maybe a light blue and a white and then change it to add that will give it a bit more of a glow effect Okay, now you can see this is our stars in 3D space here as we toggle through our timeline. Next, I'm going to add some images here. I'm going to add a full moon, make this a 3D layer. Let's hit S and scale it down. And then we're going to go up here and we're going to make a mask, an oval ellipse mask around the moon. You could also, you know, maybe use screen, but you might see through some of the blacks here. So we're going to double click on this edge here and get it to fit just right. And then once you have that, we'll probably want to feather it up a bit, just subtly, not too much. And maybe bring the mask expansion down a little bit to choke it a bit. And maybe feather it a little bit more and we're gonna bring this back in Z space we're gonna want it way back there hold shift down and then drag it back and that will multiply exponentially the Z space and you can bring it over to the side here is where I have it scale it up and now I'm gonna bring in our wolf here place that in our timeline make him a 3d layer Move him over. Then we're going to grab the pen tool and we're going to just trace around him real quick here. Obviously, you'd want to take your time doing this, but uh, just for the purposes of showing you, I'm going to you know do it a little quicker here. Obviously, if you want to take your time, get into all those hairs and the details and whatever you may be, um, you know, masking out may not be a wolf, whatever you choose to use this technique for. And let's get him in the right position here, move him over. Move him back in Z-space a little bit, scale him up. All right, making some progress here. And you can also feather him up a bit, you know, just get it to blend so it doesn't look like it's just some image you just cut out. 
This is looking pretty good. So let's add a new solid here. And we're going to make this our grid. And I'll show you what we're going to do with this right now. We will come over here to effects, type in grid, grab the grid, and throw it on top. For now, we're just going to turn it off. We'll come back to that later. I'll show you what that's for. But I also want to add a new camera. Probably should have done this before I added my images in. So now I'm going to have to rescale them. Um, if you add the camera before you add the images, you won't have to rescale. But um, we'll just, you know, whatever. It's not going to take that long. So just rescale it up to where you wanted it. And the camera is for the purposes of movement in 3D space. And this will give this composition all some, you know, just some subtle life here. We're not looking for something too crazy because the main focus here is obviously to target the new videos, not to say, hey, look at the end slate, how crazy it is. Next, I want to pre-compose all these layers, and we're going to call this our background, because this is going to be the background of the end slate. And let's turn our grid back on. And now we're going to make the masks for the holes where the video layers will appear. And as you know, well, from watching California on before, Casim always has about three videos that you can also click on. So let's make those holes right now. So you're going to put your mask on and then you're going to go down to your compositing mode and hit subtract and that will give you the see-through layer so you can see through to the transparency. Now let's duplicate this background layer and I'm going to show you why here. When we drop our videos through, we don't want it to appear so flat. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the background that we just duplicated and feather all these masks that we just created, creating like a nice vignette look around our videos that we're dropping in. And we can also go in and we can choke each of these just a little bit by the mask expansion, making a negative mask expansion. Very subtle, you don't want to do it too much. Um, it might start to look a little strange. Just use your best judgment on this. I'm gonna do minus four for the mask expansion. And I think feathering at about 10, that looks pretty good. All right. Now we're going to add our text. You can turn your grid off. I like to leave it on for now because I can, you know, see that, make sure everything's going to be centered. There's also a way you can do this down below um, in your text and title safe. You can choose grid, but, you know, I already have this one going. Might as well just leave it on. So let's just type in check out my new videos below and then we will change the color on this, change the font, make it not look so chunky and blocky. It's just a standard century gothic bold, make it orange, seems to go with theme. We're going to change this through a 3D layer just because it's easier to move around. It's not going to affect it because we don't have a camera in this. Our camera, remember, is pre-composed with our background layer. So anything outside of that pre-composed background is not going to be affected by the camera in that background. Let's add a nice bevel and emboss here and scale it up. Just gives the text a little bit more depth. And center it. And turn up the depth a bit. You know, it gives it a little bit more. And then we could duplicate this layer and just grab it on the y-axis and bring it straight down since it's already centered and then we'll type in click here click here and click here under our three transparencies and then recenter that scale it down a bit it's a little big Just get these spaced out right. There we go. That's better. Let's change this color here to a light blue. And let's duplicate the text one more time by hitting Control D. Bring it down on the Y axis once again. Let's change this to say 
follow me on Twitter at CasimG. Move it over on the X axis, center it, double click on our background here, and let's add camera movement. So we're going to set a keyframe at the beginning of our composition and then set a keyframe at the end of our composition. And then we're going to go up to our camera and select camera Z tool and zoom on in. A little too much. And now you can see that everything is going to be zooming accordingly. Turn off our grid. And another thing you can do here is take our second background layer and you can add a fill to it and make it black. And now you can see those vignettes a little bit better. They're a little stronger now. And just to blend everything, I like to add an adjustment layer. And this will adjust everything. If you add this adjustment layer over the top here and go to color correction curves, and then just adjust your curves here, maybe give it a little contrast. And you know, you can make it a cool look or warm it up a bit. I like this look. This is pretty much the look I went for with Casim's hair. And um, maybe bring a little bit less contrast there. And there you can see the difference there. And if you render this out, then pretty quickly we have a you know cool looking end slate there with some you know very subtle motion. It's not too distracting, but it looks good. Once you export this, Casim will then have this and he can drop whatever videos he wants behind it weekly as it changes. That's just something that he can have and drop whatever he wants behind those transparencies whenever he wants for whatever video he chooses. I hope you guys like this tutorial. I hope you guys use this. It's a great tool for YouTube you know, to go through and then you can annotate the videos and link them to other videos that you may have or that your friends may have or that you've collaborated on. This is how we do it and well this is how I do it at least. I hope you guys learned something from this. Take it, use it for yourselves, and uh, I'll see you guys later. Flying high in my Superman side. Ooh, I'm